Okay, good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. I'm Councilmember Daniel Drum and I'm Chair of the Committee. This morning we have been joined by Councilmember Barry Grudenchik, Councilmember Karen Kosowitz, Councilmember Farrell Lewis, Councilmember Adrian Adams, Councilmember Robert Cornegy, Councilmember Keith Powers, um, and our uh, Minority Leader Steve Matteo. Today the Committee will be voting on nine items. An expense budget modification, a revenue budget modification, a capital budget modification, a transparency resolution, and five Article 11 tax exemptions. Let's start with the budget modifications. The expense budget modification represents movements of approximately $984 million of funding between and within city agencies to reallocate appropriations in the city's expense budget. A significant portion of the funding is being moved to effectuate the budget agreement that the Council fought for this past June. We have several important wins that are being reflected in this mod, including $54 million for indirect rate increases for human services contracts so that our nonprofit partners can better afford to provide the vital services on which our constituents rely every day. And pay parity for critical public sector workers, including $29 million for early childhood education providers and $7.4 million for legal service providers so that these workers are paid fairly. The expense mod also reflects important shifts in criminal justice funding to further the goal of closing Rikers and to implement the state enacted bail reforms. $74.8 million for new headcount to support discovery reform. $16.6 .6 million for expanded supervised release capacity to support bail reform, and $22 million in savings from the Department of Correction for, uh, for the closure of the Brooklyn House of Detention and the Eric M. Taylor Detention Center. The, budget, the revenue budget modification recognizes $684 million in new revenues in fiscal 2020 and authorizes the appropriation of that new revenue and an adjustment to the General Reserve to increase the budget stabiliz stabilization account by $549.5 million to repay debt service for fiscal 2021. The capital budget modification moves capital funding between and within city agencies. All increases are offset by an equal amount of decreases, mar uh, making the next fiscal impact of the modification, uh, excuse me, making the net fiscal impact of this modification zero. A representative from the Mayor's Office of Management and Budget is here to answer any questions we may have about the three modifications. Next is the transparency resolution, which sets forth the new designations and changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. Organizations appearing in the resolution that have not yet completed the pre-qualification process conducted by the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, the Council or another entity are identified in the attached charts with an asterisk. As with all transparency resolutions, Council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any Council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with proposed subcontractors used by organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Benjamin Smith from the General Counsel's Office is here and can assist you with any questions or concerns regarding disclosures. Next are the five land use items. The first is William R. Anderson in Councilmember Le uh, Levine's district, which would receive a full 32-year Article 11 exemption to preserve 32 units of affordable rental housing. The, center, the second is 1632 Hutchinson River Parkway East in Councilmember Joe Nye's district, which would receive a partial 40-year Article 11 exemption to preserve 44 units of affordable rental housing. The third is 1414 Walton Avenue in Councilmember Cabrera's district, which would receive a full 40-year Article 11 exemption to preserve 60 units of affordable rental housing. The fourth is 254 East 184th Street in Councilmember Torres's district, which would receive a full 40-year Article 11 exemption to preserve 24 units of affordable home ownership. The fifth is Evergreen and Tie Bout Pillars in Councilmember Torres's district and Councilmember Salamanca's district, 
which would uh, receive a full 40-year Article 11 exemption to preserve 120 units of affordable rental housing. The council members in the relevant districts are supportive of these actions. Uh, are there any questions on any of the items on the agenda? If not, I'm going to wish all of you a very happy and healthy holiday season, and I'm going to ask Billy Martin, the committee clerk, to call the final finance committee roll of this decade. Roll call vote, committee on finance. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Gibson. Happy holidays to all of my colleagues. I vote aye again for the last time in 2019. I vote aye. Carnegie. I vote aye. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Adams. Aye. Powers. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Matteo. Aye. By vote of nine in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee. Okay, so we're going to keep the vote open for about another 10 minutes uh, to allow the members to come to vote. Thank you very much.